to engineers. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. What's the silver bullet to becoming a principal engineer in record time? Hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people say, there's no silver bullet. Actually, there is. There is a silver bullet. Hmm. And here's what it is. Now, on the Microsoft.com site, there's a site called Patterns and Practices. Right. And what the purpose of that was, and that was done back in the you know, late 90s, to early 2000s. Right. And here's what the goal of that was, and that's what I use as the core of my teaching with all the engineers I work with. I love Patterns and Practices. And Microsoft just happened to do a great job of documenting these. And what happened is Microsoft Research was going out into the world of software and studying all the work that had been done, the great work that had been done by, there's so many great engineers that have come before us. True. So many great engineers and was formally documenting those into a series of standardized patterns and practices that, were, that were, had boundaries around them. You know what that's doing? What that's doing is magic. What that's doing is it's putting the same discipline in software as exists in classic engineering. In classic engineering, when you make a mistake, you know, in aviation, a plane may fall out of the air and people, you know, get killed. Uh, when you make a mistake on bridges, you know, the bridge may fail. So classic engineering has high cost of mistakes we get lazy in software, right? We talk about this artistic yeah. software. I don't, I'm not a big believer in the artistic software nonsense. True. It should be an engineering discipline. Yep. And what this is doing is saying, put the discipline back in engineering. Let's understand what everybody did before us, understand what they did and understand all the mistakes. What are the risks and mitigations? How do you mitigate those? And I'm gonna tell you what this does. And you, like I said, find that on Microsoft.com, uh, Patterns of Practice site. Amazon has a builder's library, which I also like to stitch in. Google has great material. You know, there's so much incredible material on the web, unlike any era we ever lived in, okay? But what it does is allows you to formalize the way that you learn. You're able to formalize the foundation. This also ties in with Elon Musk's strategy of understanding, Mm. which is you must understand the fundamentals. The reason this dude is able to go industry by industry by industry and master those is he masters the fundamentals. Yeah. He boils down, the genius that he has is boiling down the noise and getting to the signal. What is the important part that you have to learn? Mm. For example, a cache aside pattern. So I was using cache aside pattern 40 years ago. It's documented, you understand it, and then you understand, well, what are the trade-offs with cache aside pattern? You know, what's my cache startup strategy? What's my eviction strategy? What's, you know, you're always factoring the cap theorem, consistency, availability, yep. partition tolerance, right? How long is the eventual and eventual consistency? Right. So these are all the kinds of things that you add there. And here's what you're doing. If you think about a normal engineer's path, especially in this era, they'll work a couple years at a place, they'll move and work a couple years. And when they're bouncing around, oftentimes changing domains, they're learning three or four patterns and practices at each stop. True. After a period of 12, 15 years, all of a sudden, they have this broad base of expertise. They have this incredible foundation of patterns. They make great design decisions and great implementation decisions. Right. So that's how they develop. Now, what's the fast path to that? We're gonna master what they've already learned. So we're going right to what they already know. So right. we're going to the end game, which is here's the pattern, here's the mitigations, and here's the trade-offs that you need to make. And when you're doing a design or an implementation, you go right back to the patterns and check. You do it as a checklist. Right. What are my trade-offs? So you don't miss stuff because it's not that you won't get it right eventually, is you won't get it right in version one. Imagine if your MVP is as good as your version five. Yes. Now that's the magic. Now, you know what you've done? You now have the fast path to getting promoted. And I can tell you, there's been at least 20 examples of people that have gone with this for me. Their next job, several of them have doubled their money or more. Right. It's crazy. This is, this is a very good tip you gave. Uh, I remember they had a book also came out of Beautiful that, book. that Cloud that, Patterns that and Practices book. Yeah. yeah. I think that book scared a lot of people because it was very thick. Book. Oh, yeah. I read it. Uh, so I remember having that book too. Yes. And I read it cover to cover, by the way. Yeah. See, that's what people miss. I am sure. Because think about a it. A lot of people may have not completed Th- Think about it. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're having to make all the same mistakes your predecessors made. Of Think course. about classic engineers, yep. engineer electrical, mechanical. They study other engineers. That's all they do is study what other people did and what they learned. Yep. We don't do that in software. So if you do that, I'm going to tell you what you'll see happen in 12, 12 months. Right. It's shocking. All of a sudden, you have an engineer one year out of college that 12 months later, when they're thinking of designing a system, thinks like a principal engineer. Now, that doesn't mean their implementation will be as good as a principal engineer. So they're but not their a principal understanding engineer. Yet, will be there. But their mental model is the same. Yeah. So, and I tried this at Huawei in China, it worked brilliantly. It's spectacularly effective. The other dimension to it, here's tip of the day. Right. We'll, we'll finish with this is sure. whiteboard, 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 whiteboard. The True. only skill that matters is your whiteboard skills. If you have a single skill, it needs to be whiteboarding. True. And here's what I ask people to do. 
get themselves a twelve fifteen dollar portable whiteboard. Yep. Right. Get it off. You know, whatever. Get off. Get your little portable whiteboard. Right. And when you're studying a pattern of practice or you're studying something new, you're going to forget ninety percent of what you read unless you write it down. Right. Draw it on the whiteboard because think about what's going on there. That's your public interface to the world on what kind of an engineer you are. Yes. If you can't whiteboard it, it doesn't. You ain't making principal engineer. Yeah. So if you want to get to principal engineer, and here's the beauty of it, and I'm going to tell you what happens to people that do this. All right, here's the deal. When they go into interviews, because I've had that debrief with them afterwards on the next job. First, first of all, they get every job offer. They beat every other person in the interview. Why? Because their whiteboard skills are unmatched. That is so disproportionately weighted that it doesn't matter what happened in the rest of the, what happens when they're, when they're interviewing with the principal engineer that's on that loop or the as appropriate interviewer, and they're able to communicate on the whiteboard how they design systems, how they implement systems, what the trade-offs are of those systems, and publicly, they go, you know what? Not only can this person do the work, but they can educate the next generation. Here's what happens. So remember that person I said that was considered one of the weakest engineers? The next job, principal money. Wow. Unloaded a wheelbarrow full of money right at his feet, right? right? Now, they couldn't give him a principal title because mm. everybody else in the company is going to quit. Right. But they gave him principal money. Principal so we're talking money. tripling your money in one right. job change. This should be the, the headline for this our interview, the segment that become a principal engineer within a year and which is like almost Mentally. impossible. Mentally. Yeah. Mentally. Yeah. You, now, I don't, want to, I don't want to disrespect real principal engineers who got there the hard way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's not meant to disrespect. But... They didn't have to make all the mistakes to avoid all the mistakes. True, true. They're able to deliver with fewer mistakes in the early versions, which means more output in less time, which means more value to the company, which means you need to be paid more. True. So you're increasing your value relative to the company, and so you should be compensated. And you know what your skill level should be on the whiteboard when you have mastery? You should be, this is the analogy I use. You know how, how, how smooth a grand pianist is on the piano? Yep. That needs to be you on the whiteboard. Yeah. When you look like a grand piano player, when you're communicating with somebody on a whiteboard, you're now on a good path. Because if you, in, I don't care who you interview with, when they see that, they're like principal engineer or board, right. period. Nothing right. else matters. On the flip side is you can be the, here's what I'll say. The best engineer doesn't get hired. Right. The best engineer that communicates the best on the skills that they have gets hired. Right. And so right. if you can out communicate all the competition, you'll win every time. True, true. I'm smiling because I'm just thinking. How can you not, inter how can you not hire somebody that's a spectacular on the whiteboard? True. Because we know that's the hardest skill in engineering. Yes. So the hardest skill in engineering they've mastered. Right. So your mind says, there's no way they can be this good. True. But your eyes, the eye test says they are this good. Yeah. So what you end up doing is you say, you know, we got to pay. Right. We can't give them the title because right. we'll demoralize. But you know what? We can give them the cash. Yeah. And so the goal of this is to help next generations, help them make a good living and do great work at doing it. And they'll True. earn it while they're doing it. Perfect. I was just smiling because I was thinking maybe this is your training did this to me when I went to my this new job. First thing I noticed that there's no whiteboard in the office. And oh my I said, I want a whiteboard. And everybody was looking at me funny that you are the CTO. Why you need whiteboard? You got it. And I kept on <laughs> pounding the table that I want a whiteboard <laughs> till I got one. So it's very interesting. I and think, think about the magic. You, maybe. Think about yes. Think about the, and, I, and I was I was I thought it was important. You know, back in the time when we were yeah. together. But nowhere near as important as I realize it is now. Right. Because I've realized from literally so many interviews that. You'll never lose an interview if you're the best on the whiteboard. You can't yeah. lose. Yes. Because that skill is so much harder than any. Think about it. You've only got an hour with three or four people. Right. So you've probably got, you know, 60 quality minutes. You're up there describing what you've designed, how you designed it, right. what the patterns and practices are that are in play. Here's the other beauty of patterns and practices. They're platform independent. They're framework independent. Right. They're language independent. How many things can you learn in computing that last for eternity? Cash aside, I've been using it 40 years ago. It's the same now as it was then. Right. Now the reference implementation or the best implementation of cash aside will be better today than it was back 30 years ago. True. But the pattern hasn't moved. So how many times can you study something that never ages? True. Everything we study is aging out, right? It has a use yeah. by date. Pattern right. practice has no use by date. Yes, yes. And then you tie it in. You go to you know Amazon site, which has a builder's network. You start studying the examples that go. You know, Google has tremendous documentation on Big Table and all kinds of cool stuff they build. Yep. Incredible. You can spend a lifetime mastering technology that's publicly accessible on the internet, follow your favorite friends on blogs and stuff like that, and become, you know, the best engineer you can possibly be. True. And 
then you have to be able to communicate it on the whiteboard. If you can't, then that puts a fundamental ceiling on an from an engineering standpoint. Right. Then affects you on the management path. But so, on the engineering path, if you want to get to principal engineer, you want to get to CTO, you want to get to J, you know, you want to be the yeah. you want to be the big dog. You got to be the master of the whiteboard. True, true, true. Absolutely, I I, I agree with you. So, Mike, thank you very much. Before I say thank you to you, I would like to have another request to you, which yep. is like you should quit your job and become a coach. Because yep. I think you are a tremendous coach and I think you affected so many dev managers and leads in Microsoft. So I think you can bring a lot of value to be a coach. So, and, and I'm waiting for the day <laughs> you will say, I am a coach so I can go back to you and learn something more from you. So thank you very much, Mike, uh, for taking time and speaking to us. Thank you. Yeah, you know, like I said, I've been doing this a total. I started when I was 17, so the first computer came into my high school, and at that day, I knew what I wanted to do the rest of my life. You right. know, I always loved software. Like I said, it was drug kicking, screaming out of writing code every day, but I still enjoy reading and looking and seeing what other people have solved. And, uh, you know, someday I will uh, get into coaching and stuff, professionally developing people, right. uh, because to me, that's the greatest joy I get. When I see somebody else that has success, gets promoted, gets advanced, but gets a new opportunity, it makes my it makes my week. I mean, there's a there's a, there's I've learned to get a joy there that's still not quite the same as writing code, right. but it's close. It's close. close. It is great joy. I mean, uh, you got to love it, right? You're on LinkedIn. Somebody True. advances, they get promoted, a new opportunity. And you're like, oh man, I'm so excited. And the fact that you played some small role in that, right. you know, brings a level. And and you know that you know what it does. It it potentially sets them and their family up for great success and financial support for many many years to come. True. You can build new generations of developers. And it's a fast path to getting competent. Imagine the career earnings difference if you master patterns of practice and whiteboarding in early years, you're going to double or triple your promotion velocity. So cool. there's nothing like it. Agree. Agree. And um, yeah. do it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank yep. you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah, welcome.